Now, governments and businesses around the world are promising to cut their carbon emissions to help limit global warming. Around 90% of the global economy is now covered by some kind of net zero target. But how good are these commitments? Let's put it to our, our panel. James, that statistic in itself, 90%, sounds pretty remarkable when you think where we were uh, just a few years ago. But how credible are those commitments? The level of credibility varies massively, but the general direction of travel is hugely encouraging. I mean, if you think back sort of five years ago, six years ago, when the Paris Agreement was uh, signed, the most ambitious target in the world was probably the UK's, which was an 80% cut in emissions by 2050. And now we've got a situation where 90% of the global economy is covered by these net zero goals. The stated intent of governments that are responsible for 90% of the global economy is to effectively fully decarbonise, um, and where they can't fully decarbonise, expand carbon sinks to compensate um, all activity. You've also got 4,000 businesses uh, or, or government organisations or, or city states or the like, but 4,000 different entities similarly have these net zero targets in place. Uh, the companies involved uh, command revenues of nearly $20 trillion. This is like the big global economic project of the age. It's the defining long-term priority of governments and businesses all around the world. So there's very legitimate questions about the credibility of some of these targets. They vary massively in quality. Some are really good and are backed by billion-dollar investment plans and are looking at using new technologies to really deliver deep decarbonisation. Others are literally nothing more than a pledge, a promise that we will do this in the future. Um, and some are probably being used to cover up activity that you wouldn't want to see. But there is real progress here and having the target is absolutely the first step to then delivering on it. Uh, Judy, Greta Thunberg's warned about net zero targets being used as excuses to postpone real action. How do you guard against greenwashing? Well, rules and so on are being put in, but really it's just very difficult because people, first of all, set up their targets and then they list their offsets and claim that they will actually compensate for it. The real issue is whether we are actually putting out emissions at all, because offsets may or may not deliver. And once you release any emission that is into the atmosphere, it will stay there for 300 to 1,000 years, so that the offsets and so on actually failing is an enormous risk to us. And other events add to the overall picture. For the first time, we've seen million acre fires as a result of climate change, burning down massive old growth forests in the USA, while we're blithely talking about planting trees or offsetting. James, I want one final thought from you. When we talk about net zero, it's part of the common language around climate action now. But how many people genuinely understand what it means? And, and actually, does that matter? Um, I think th the level of understanding from the polling is actually much better than you'd expect because it is a slightly technical term. You know, it does refer to balancing out the emissions that we have and the emissions that we soak up. And there, there's a degree of science behind that. Um, but, um, you know, polling by the UK government has shown a majority of people uh, are aware of the term. They broadly understand that it means, you know, getting to zero emissions, the deep decarbonisation of our economy. And and, you're, and it's being widely used. It's being widely used in a lot of businesses. It's being widely used by politicians. And I think it will continue to grow in awareness because, as I say, it is the defining economic priority that we want to see. And, and just on the fact that there are these concerns about offsets and the like, the thing is the vast majority of advocates for net zero, they know that. Um, you know, the UN Secretary General stood up at COP26 and said he wants a new working group to ensure that these targets are credibly met. Uh, there are initiatives that are saying if you want to say your net zero, you need to cut your direct emissions by over 90%. You can only use compensation or offsets for the tiny little bit at the end that, that is really difficult to tackle. So um, there are legitimate concerns and we do need to be wary to spot greenwash. But there is, as I say, real progress here and, and some, some modest source for optimism given the scale of the challenge okay. that we face.